Cardiac Tamponade, Wikipedia Article Audio Cardiac Tamponade, also known as Pericardial Tamponade, is when fluid in the pericardium builds up and results in compression of the heart. Onset may be rapid or more gradual. Symptoms typically include those of cardiogenic shock including shortness of breath, weakness, lightheadedness, and cough. Other symptoms may relate to the underlying cause. Signs and Symptoms Common causes include cancer, kidney failure, chest trauma, and pericarditis. Other causes include connective tissue diseases, hypothyroidism, aortic rupture, and following cardiac surgery. In Africa, tuberculosis is a relatively common cause. Diagnosis may be suspected based on low blood pressure, jugular venous distension, pericardial rub, or quiet heart sounds. The diagnosis may be further supported by specific electrocardiogram changes, chest x-ray, or an ultrasound of the heart. If fluid increases slowly the pericardial sac can expand to contain more than 2 liters, however, if the increase is rapid as little as 200 ml can result in tamponade. Causes When tamponade results in symptoms, drainage is necessary. This can be done by pericardiocentesis, surgery to create a pericardial window, or a pericardiectomy. Drainage may also be necessary to rule out infection or cancer. Other treatments may include the use of dobutamine or in those with low blood volume, intravenous fluids. Those with few symptoms and no worrisome features can often be closely followed. The frequency of tamponade is unclear. One estimate from the United States places it at 2 per 10,000 per year. Surgery Onset may be rapid or more gradual. Symptoms typically include those of cardiogenic shock including shortness of breath, weakness, lightheadedness, and cough. Other symptoms may relate to the underlying cause. Pathophysiology Cardiac tamponade is caused by a large or uncontrolled pericardial effusion, i.e. the buildup of fluid inside the pericardium. This commonly occurs as a result of chest trauma, but can also be caused by myocardial rupture, cancer, uremia, pericarditis, or cardiac surgery, and rarely occurs during retrograde aortic dissection, or while the person is taking anticoagulant therapy. The effusion can occur rapidly, or over a more gradual period of time. The fluid involved is often blood but pus is also found in some circumstances. Diagnosis Causes of increased pericardial effusion include hypothyroidism, physical trauma, pericarditis, iatrogenic trauma, and myocardial rupture. Treatment One of the most common settings for cardiac tamponade is in the first 24 to 48 hours after heart surgery. After heart surgery, chest tubes are placed to drain blood. These chest tubes, however, are prone to clot formation. When a chest tube becomes occluded or clogged, the blood that should be drained can accumulate around the heart, leading to tamponade. The outer layer of the heart is made of fibrous tissue which does not easily stretch. So once fluid begins to enter the pericardial space, pressure starts to increase. Pre-hospital care Hospital management Epidemiology If fluid continues to accumulate, each successive diastolic period leads to less blood entering the ventricles. Eventually, Increasing pressure on the heart forces the septum to bend in towards the left ventricle, leading to a decrease in stroke volume. This causes the development of obstructive shock, 
which if left untreated may lead to cardiac arrest. Initial diagnosis can be challenging, as there are a number of differential diagnoses, including tension pneumothorax, and acute heart failure. In a trauma patient presenting with P in the absence of hypovolemia and tension pneumothorax, the most likely diagnosis is cardiac tamponade. Signs of classical cardiac tamponade include three signs, known as Beck's triad. Low blood pressure occurs because of decreased stroke volume, jugular venous distension due to impaired venous return to the heart, and muffled heart sounds due to fluid buildup inside the pericardium. Other signs of tamponade include pulsus paradoxus, and ST segment changes on the electrocardiogram, which may also show low voltage QRS complexes as well as general signs and symptoms of shock. However, some of these signs may not be present in certain cases. A fast heart rate, although expected, may be absent in people with uremia and hypothyroidism. In addition to the diagnostic complications afforded by the wide-ranging differential diagnosis for chest pain, Diagnosis can be additionally complicated by the fact that patients will often be weak or faint at presentation. For instance, a fast rate of breathing and difficulty breathing on exertion that progresses to air hunger at rest can be a key diagnostic symptom, but it may not be possible to obtain such information from patients who are unconscious or who have convulsions at presentation. Tamponade can often be diagnosed radiographically. Echocardiography, which is the diagnostic test of choice, often demonstrates an enlarged pericardium or collapsed ventricles. A large cardiac tamponade will show as an enlarged globular-shaped heart on chest X-ray. During inspiration, the negative pressure in the thoracic cavity will cause increased pressure into the right ventricle. This increased pressure in the right ventricle will cause the interventricular septum to bulge towards the left ventricle, leading to decreased filling of the left ventricle. At the same time, right ventricle volume is markedly diminished and sometimes it can collapse. Initial treatment given will usually be supportive in nature, for example administration of oxygen, and monitoring. There is little care that can be provided pre-hospital other than general treatment for shock. Some teams have performed an emergency thoracotomy to release clotting in the pericardium caused by a penetrating chest injury. Prompt diagnosis and treatment is the key to survival with tamponade. Some pre-hospital providers will have facilities to provide pericardiocentesis, which can be life-saving. If the patient has already suffered a cardiac arrest, pericardiocentesis alone cannot ensure survival, and so rapid evacuation to a hospital is usually the more appropriate course of action. Initial management in hospital is by pericardiocentesis. This involves the insertion of a needle through the skin and into the pericardium and aspirating fluid under ultrasound guidance preferably. This can be done laterally through the intercostal spaces, usually the fifth, or as a subxiphoid approach. A left parasternal approach begins 3 to 5 cm left of the sternum to avoid the left internal mammary artery, in the fifth intercostal space. Often, a cannula is left in place during resuscitation following initial drainage so that the procedure can be performed again if the need arises. If facilities are available, an emergency pericardial window may be performed instead, during which the pericardium is cut open to allow fluid to drain. Following stabilization of the patient, surgery is provided to seal the source of the bleed and mend the pericardium. In people following heart surgery the nurses monitor the amount of chest tube drainage. If the drainage volume drops off, 
and the blood pressure goes down, this can suggest tamponade due to chest tube clogging. In that case, the patient is taken back to the operating room for an emergency reoperation. If aggressive treatment is offered immediately and no complications arise, or they are dealt with quickly and fully contained, then adequate survival is still a distinct possibility. The frequency of tamponade is unclear. One estimate from the United States places it at 2 per 10,000 per year. It is estimated to occur in 2% of those with stab or gunshot wounds to the chest.